Yo, what up? It's your boy Eclipse with Team Ruthless with Ecast episode 6. Um, got a few things to announce. Fight Night Friday, every Friday, 8 o'clock Eastern PM. Um, I think we're doing Mario Kart. I don't know what we're doing this week. Uh, probably Mario Kart. Mario Kart, Splatoon, Smash Bros. It's kind of in the rotation. Um, Disorder Unit is still doing Damon X Machina Friday night, so Damon X Machina fans, go play that. Shout out. Support the boy. He trying to keep the game alive. Um, I'm burnt out on it. We we all jumped in last week to kind of support Disorder Unit, but uh, I'm burnt out. <laughs> we played for like a good hour, and that was it. And uh, But it was good. It was successful. We got people on. You know, it was good to see. Um, shout out to everybody that showed up. Um, and I got a couple videos dropping this week on YouTube. Um, if y'all saw my Cosmic Break YouTube, I'm probably going to do a follow-up video on that. Um, I got questions about people who, who want to know more about the game, and I'll do my best. Uh, that was my first time playing, obviously. Um, I kind of still don't know what I'm doing, but uh, I hear it's a very cool game with a lot of customization um, and big multiplayer. So we'll definitely check it out. I guess it's a remake of an old like MMO that dropped. But uh, yeah, that, that's my first remake MMO I've ever played. Um, but other than that, let's start the episode. Ecast episode 6. We got a few things we want to talk about. Um, nothing crazy this week. It's kind of a slow week, but... That's cool because we're trying to keep these short and to the point. So, first thing I want to talk about is Resident Evil 8. Um, I'm not particularly like super interested in this game. Uh, I think I'm always going to follow Resident Evil because it's kind of one of those games I grew up playing and watching. Um, even though I think the last one I beat is 6. <laughs> but I don't know. It looks cool. Like, it looks like it's the same format as 7. Um, and it, it is focused on a horror, which is cool. But I prefer my Resident Evil games third person. Um, and in terms of reverse the multiplayer, that looks aight, but I kind of don't get what Capcom is doing. Like, why are they always, why are they so focused on getting these, like, tacked on multiplayer games? Like, I, and this is someone who enjoyed uh, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Um, the only pro problem with that game was balance and network. Network was terrible, especially on PS3. And that was mostly, that was like all the PS3 games problem back then. Like, network just wasn't that great on PS3. But, I mean, other than that, like, I don't know. I just feel like if Capcom sat down and made like a real dope multiplayer game or just like remake Outbreak. Like, why aren't y'all doing that? Remake Outbreak. Give Outbreak the Resident Evil 2 treatment and I promise you it will slap. But yeah, I don't understand Capcom. Like, I don't know what they're doing. Like, they keep just throwing these mediocre multiplayer games and I don't know if they're trying to like catch a feel for what people want but I feel like Cap the Resident Evil community is kind of like I feel like they're vocal on what they actually want but I don't know maybe I'm wrong maybe they're not you know fans are terrible sometimes <laughs> so um but yeah other than that you know, I hope y'all enjoy it I'll probably watch a let's play or something if people are still doing those or watching my friend stream he always gets the Resident Evil game so um, definitely interested. I'm definitely gonna be Wikipedia in the story like I do on all the other ones too. So yeah, I, I just hope it's dope, and I hope y'all enjoy it. Yo, it's something else I wanted to bring up. Like, yo, I think this year is the year to switch. Like, I I feel like they already just dropped. Like, what came out this month? I don't remember. But yo, Nintendo Switch really got like three games back to back every month coming out. Like Mario 3D World's dropping, Bowser's Fury dropping. That don't look lit. I'm picking that up. Probably one of the better Mario multiplayer games in a while. And they add them online. They add them online. They need to do that with mad games. Um, Monster Hunter Rise, which is probably going to be another fight night every Friday thing. You know we throwing hunting parties. Um, we going to be in there. And there was something else dropping. And I don't remember. But I, I think No More Heroes 3 is coming out. Something else is coming out too on the Switch. I'm just saying, and I think they're gonna be announcing some some bigger games this year. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, but I just feel like this, like uh, compared to PlayStation Five and Xbox X, like I just don't see anything that makes me want to get the new consoles yet. And then the, most of the games coming on those consoles are coming on the PS4. I'm getting near on the PS4, or even Halo. Like I'm getting that on the Xbox. 
So I don't know, man. I think it's the year to switch. And uh, last year might have been a year to switch, but uh, I, th I think this is another year where Switch is gonna be the console to play. It's probably gonna, at least for me, like it's probably gonna be my prioritized console, like my my number one. So we'll see. Yo, and something else we gotta talk. About. We gotta talk about Xbox, bro. <laughs> yo, I don't know who working at Xbox, but yo, I'm looking for new work. <laughs> Because I, I can make better choices than that. Like, I don't know who y'all paying to make these choices. I don't know who decided to try to double the price of Xbox Live. But y'all tripping. And I'm actually kind of surprised Um, people got that shit switched pretty quick. Like, 8, 12 hours. Y'all changed y'all minds. Y'all said, oh, we messed up. I'm sorry, fans. Um, We're not going to change the price. Oh, and free to play games will now be free to play. You will not really need live to play, which y'all been should have been doing, but whatever. You know, you can't win them all. We want something. Um, obviously, they did it to try to make the pat ultimate pass look way, way more worth getting. Since I, I don't know why that's like you can't just make something if you're trying to get someone to move on to something else. You can't make the other thing just worse all together. We're just gonna leave it all together, like. Uh, and this this might sound shitty, but like if I was Xbox, I would have got rid of live gold live or gold. I would have got rid of gold, right? Dropped the pads, made that like twelve dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we probably taking a loss, but more people are gonna put that two dollars in, get pass and ultimate. You'll probably get more money that way than sending out all these cards ahead of time thinking y'all were gonna get, have people paying $60 for six months for nothing. Like, what are you paying for? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know what you're paying, especially when a lot of your games are going on PC, but you don't have to pay for it to play online. So I don't know what y'all doing at Xbox. I really don't. I have all the consoles, or besides the new ones, Xbox X or whatever, and PlayStation 5. I, have, I, I got a PS5 almost at launch, and I got an Xbox One at launch. I barely play my Xbox. Like, I play it every once in a while. I play Halo on it. I play mostly just Halo. <laughs> the Master Chief Collection in Halo 5. Or, yeah, whatever. Anyways, I play them in, like, it's my least played console. Ah, uh, y'all exclusives are whack. Let's be honest. Um, and y'all don't really offer anything. Like, what? I don't know. The Xbox Pass is worth it. Like, I, I do think that was cool. Um, I also, I'm not going to say y'all not entirely worth it. Like, the backwards compatibility, compatibility, PlayStation needs to copy that shit or hop on that shit too. Because I don't think that's really dope. Y'all doing some really good stuff. I don't know what happened. Like, y'all always, like, take a, a huge leap back when y'all make certain announcements. And I don't get it. Um, I don't know. Y'all need better management or something or better ideas. My hair is so long. I know I told y'all my hair wasn't going to look crazy. But I'm going to twist it again. But God dang, it's all. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, Xbox. Y'all need to get y'all shit together, man. <laughs> all right. So the last topic we're going to talk about. And this was a little bit more serious, I guess. Um, but this is... Y'all know who Ninja is, right? The freaking Twitch streamer. Biggest gaming name out there. Like, um, people... I feel like people are mad at him. Because of what he said on this interview. And I'm going I'm to say it. This is a quote. Ninja says, parents should parent their kids, citing that it's not his job to teach kids about racism and white privilege. <sighs> I feel like... I feel like he's right, <laughs> but he's wrong. Like, I feel like people should be careful when they say... Like, people are saying, no, he should do this, and he had, or he has to do this, and he has to do this because he's such a big name. And he could be the perfect example. And I think he doesn't have to do anything. Should he do it? Yeah, he should. Um, But I kind of agree that it is his job. I do think it would be great that if he, he did speak out against it. But also, I, I wish people like told him how to. Because I don't even know if I could tell him how to. I can give him suggestions, I guess. But what is the... What do you do... How do you teach that? Um, besides just like speaking out against it, which I think is a good step. He could, he can definitely be an example. I 
know how he could do it. Like, he, he could definitely be an example against it. Um, just by, I don't know. You got, it's, especially in gaming, because gaming, even characters, gaming, black characters aren't really too well represented in the gaming world. So, if he could just help bring the light more like gaming create black gaming creators and i don't even i don't really watch ninja's content he could be already doing this for all i know um but just bringing up more black gaming creators not just black black female minority people gamers twitch streamers like helping build them creating bonds friendships showing i think that's the best example you could could do like just like yo just um showing like a friendship like it's not colored not to say it don't matter but and this is a touchy topic because and, and i can go on all day in my opinion change about stuff all the time um especially this because I, I i don't think anyone has a perfect answer on what ninja should do in this situation and at least i didn't see it and i'm sure there is a, a better way he could be an example of this but i also don't think he has to it'd be great if he did and i would love if he did but there's a lot of things these Twitch streamers and gamers do, especially ones that are huge and are making a lot of money that could definitely impact the gaming community as a whole that they don't do. And I don't knock them for it. You know, it's your check. You do it. You do as you see fit. I'm shaking my camera around. But um, I don't know. Like, what is the what is the answer, guys? That's the question of the day for and, and not just Ninja. Not just Ninja, anybody. What what do we do, all of us, what do we do to teach our kids about racism and white privilege? I also think it's kind of weird, like, because as a white person, you might not ever see or experience that, and that could be Ninja. He might not ever really seen or experience it. I know he's an internet, I'm sure he's seen the N-word, but, you know, that's kind of different than real-life racism. Um, and that's someone who's experienced both, obviously. Um, but... I don't know, it's a touchy subject, but that's the question today. What do we do? What do we do? How do we, I don't want to use this TGK, it's about racism and white privilege. How do we move on as a gaming community? Not move on, fuck. I don't know, how am I gonna wear this without sounding stupid? <laughs> how do we move forward as a gaming community in terms of race? In, in racial relations like I think I'm lucky man because I really grew up around a bunch of different people um and even then he had, he had something he said in the article where like how gamers react to seeing a female gamer play games like oh snap she's a female and I was really lucky of uh, being around different people and females who play video games just as much as I did or more and that, so that wasn't weird to me when online started. When a female was playing a video game, that wasn't weird to me. Um, I, so I think I was really lucky, and I don't think a lot of people, at least it sounds like a lot of people, didn't experience that growing up, which I don't know why. I mean, maybe it was because of my parents. Maybe Ninja's right. Maybe, maybe your parents need to put you around some, some people, some different kinds of people growing up. But I don't know, man. Um... I think it's an in interesting topic. Um, I just think people need to be careful when they say he has to do something. He has to. Do. Yeah, maybe he should. And it'd be dope for everybody if he did. Or, But I think it'd be better if he led an example, not just through words, but just like showing it, being that real example. Like, and I don't know, like how... How does he do, do that without... Because, again, I don't watch Ninja's content. He could already be doing this stuff. But it is what it is. Anyways, I don't know if this... I don't know how long this is. You guys be safe, though. <laughs> I'm out. Deuces.